Hello and welcome to the second lab in the FRAM training session. To execute this lab, you will need Code Composer Studio v4.3.2 or later, FRAM Experimenters Board, and a digital multimeter. First, we will walk through the slides that explain how the lab is implemented, followed by a demo using CCS. Please follow the instructions shown in this slide to obtain the software required for the lab. In the course of the lab, we will program the experimenter's board multiple times. At the end of the lab, if you would like to restore the out-of-the-box experience, the executable file to do this can be found in the lab zip folder. First, we open a CCS workspace by opening Code Composer Studio and selecting the Lab Workspace folder available from the zip package as the workspace location. The workspace folder is used to store all the project files, including copies of the source code file. Then we import two projects that have already been set up for use in the labs. These need to be imported using Project and Import Existing option. Select the folder Lab Workspace as the root directory for the projects. Check boxes Lab 1 and Lab 2 to import both projects. Ensure Lab 1 is marked as active. If not, right-click on Lab 1 and use Set as Active Project. Once Lab 1 has been set up as the active project, double-click on the source file lab1.c. This file is used to initialize the board, execute the LED startup sequence, and ends with a while one loop. Look at your code example and make sure the while one loop is not commented out. Build and download the active project using target and debug active project. Remember to terminate the debug session once the code has been downloaded. Now you can follow me as I execute this demo using CCS. First, I go to Project and Import Existing. I browse to the root directory, which is in my desktop, Lab Workspace. I select both projects that I need, Lab 1 and Lab 2, and click Finish. Now I open up Lab 1 and you can see all the files that have been put inside the Lab 1 folder. Now double click on Lab1.c and you can scroll through this editor window to view the source code file. Make sure this line is uncommented as is the case here. To build this project, hit Project, Build Project and after it is built, hit Run and Debug. Now before you hit Debug, remember to connect the FRAM Experimenter Board. Once you hit Run and Debug, CCS opens the Debug view. Then you can click Terminate All once you've determined that the code has been downloaded to the board. You can measure power on the board by connecting the multimeter across the VCC jumper on the board as shown in the picture. Remember, you can still use the USB connection for power. Once you have the multimeter connected across the VCC jumper, set it to the microamp or the milliamp setting to measure current. You can see that at CPU speed of 8 MHz, which is what the code is configured to, the multimeter reads about 600 microamps or 75 microamps per megahertz. Since the code being executed is a single word opcode, jump dollar, the code execution is completely within the cache. This contributes to the low active power being measured. In the next lab, we will use a more typical real-world use case to measure power. In this lab, we will replace the while one statement with a function call active mode test that executes a mix of CPU instructions in an infinite loop. These instructions use different addressing modes and registers and exercise both SRAM and FRAM. The instructions to build and download the code to the board are the same as in the previous lab.
Remember to open the source code in the editor window and comment out the while one loop, but include the active mode test. Now we will follow this demo in CCS. So this is the source code window as you used in the previous lab. This line is commented out and we include the function call active mode test. Then we build a project as before, selecting project and build project and download the code using run and debug. Now before you download the code, remember you had a multimeter connected across the VCC jumper. You could either remove the meter and replace the jumper or make sure the meter is powered. Once the code is downloaded, terminate the debug session and measure the power in the same method as you did in the previous lab. At an M clock speed of 8 MHz, the same as the previous lab, the measured power should be approximately 750 microamps or just a little shy of 100 microamps per MHz. From this lab, we can deduce that the active mode test is closer to a real-world application than when using a jump dollar or while one loop. Since the while one loop executes from within the SRAM, the average active power is significantly lower than when using active mode test. The active mode test function uses a case where it reads and writes to FRAMs um, and also alternates it with SRAM reads with multiple addressing modes to make it a more realistic example. In conclusion, as the number of cache misses increase, active power increases. The cache to hit miss ratio is completely application dependent. It depends on how your loop is written. Tighter, shorter loops equals fewer cache misses and hence lower power. In the next lab, we will learn to reconfigure system clock settings and compare changes in active power with respect to frequency.